Hello everyone, Cherie Wayman from Frankel Made. Today I'm going to show you how to create a repeat pattern in Silhouette Studio. The first things that you need to think about, obviously, is what image you want to create and how many of them, colours, shapes and sizes and how you want them formed within the pattern. Secondly, you need to consider what the pattern repeat size is that you want eventually. For the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to do a six inch pattern repeat and I'm using the 12 by 12 silhouette mat for the base of the pattern making. So let's get going. You can see that I've already put together some images here of flowers and leaves and because I know pretty much how the patterns work I've already laid them out in a, a position that I think will work in a pattern repeat but that will be trial and error on your part you keep nudging them around until you think it looks like it'll work but it will be tested out shortly. Before we do anything else, I'm going to create a little six by six inch mat so that you can see how the pattern is positioned on it. And that's where you can do your adjustments. So we need to go over to the left hand side onto the drawing tools and select the rectangle, bring it to the page and using your shift button, drag it down to create a square. This square is not six by six, but the simple way to adjust that is to go up to the top menu and on the width and height here, change it to six inches. To make this easier to see, I'm going to change the color um, there we go. And at the moment, because this was the last element that I put onto the page, it's sitting foremost and just so that we can see what we're doing I'm going to send this to the back. For me I tend to use the mouse right click option often and I'm going to do the same here right click on the mouse send to back and you can see now how the flowers are positioned within that square. Let's center that square on the page make sure it's centered because that's where we're working from. The flowers don't need to be centered. I have them in a group at the moment and I can move them around this square just to see how I think it would work best. And this is where I'm going to leave it for this position. Before I do anything else, I tend to take copies and move them off the page so I can go back to them if I need to. So select everything, right hand click, copy, right hand click, paste and drag that off to the left. So that's our first stage done. I'm now going to ungroup the flowers, right hand click, ungroup and now they're all individual elements. And you can see with this page that this is the six inch area we want to cover but we want it to be a repeat pattern. And as it is, if we copied this over, there would be elements of this that are this flower, for example, that would not show. And so we need to repeat anything that comes off the six inch area over to the opposite side. So for the right hand side, we need to select this flower and this leaf. And I'm using the shift button on the keyboard to select both of them. I'm going to copy them, so right hand click copy, and I'm going to paste right on top, so it's paste in front, right hand click, paste in front. Now I've got two versions of the flowers there. And to get them to move accurately six inches over to the other side, so that they, they butt up against each other when the pattern is repeated, go over to the right hand side and there's a transform panel here, click on that, and the options at the top, you have one like a little cross with arrows on it, and it's a move panel. 
Here we can set the distance that we want the images to move. On this uh, occasion it's six inches and the first ones we want to move is from the left to the right. So we select the right hand arrow and click and they are now six inches apart on the other side. We repeat that for all the sides to make sure everything has been captured. So these are the flowers that need to be captured on the right hand side. Copy paste in front and send to the left. This is the one at the top that you need to send that moves slightly. And if you didn't see what I did there, it just nudged a little bit when I clicked on it, so I hit the undo button and it sent it back to its original place. So copy, paste in front, and send down. And finally, we want everything on the bottom, and this one's already up there, so it's everything else on the bottom here it needs to be repeated up here. So select them all, use your shift button, copy, paste in front, and use the up arrow this time and send them up to the top. Now you wouldn't have thought this particular one needed to be copied because it's off the page completely, but see how it's just this tiny little tip of it there. Um, so just be careful that you, you capture everything you need. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and look at the page, select it all, copy, paste, and move a version of it over to the side. Now the idea now is to slice through these flowers so that all you end up with is the elements that are within this six inch area. To do that, um, first of all, I need to remove the six inch square. It's, it will be coming into play again, but let's just move that over to the right hand side so that we don't affect the flowers at all. And I want two of these. This is six inches, but I want a 12 inch one as well. So it matches the size of the silhouette mat. And I'm going to make a frame with them. Easiest way is to right hand click copy and paste. So I have two of these squares. I'm going to change the color of the other square so you can see what's going on and back up to the top to change the width and height to 12 inches. This one needs to sit at the back so you can see the smaller square in the front. And I'm going to make a compound path. Um, if you don't know what a compound path is, we can cover that off in another uh, video. But just for this purpose, I'm going to make a frame. And that means that uh, making a compound path of it makes this a, an object in its own right. So the both objects move together and work together. Um, so before I make it into a compound path, I best make sure that they are centralized. And up here on the top, there is the center button. That has moved. Now I can right hand click and make compound path. And you can see that the green color has disappeared, but this square is now part of this larger square in a frame. And if we travel across, you can see that you can see through the square. I'm going to center that onto the page itself. So we have a center to page button. And again, you can visualize now how the flowers are going to sit. And we are going to end up with just the elements of the flowers within this little white area. Everything else needs to be sliced off. 
To achieve that, I'm going to bring the frame to the front. So click on it, right hand click, bring to front. And before we do anything else, I'm going to select it all, copy, paste and take it off the page. And I'll, I'll just group it so that it's all in the right position. We're nearly there and basically what you need to do now is select it all again. You can see all the little grey lines showing you the selected elements on the page beneath the frame. And to cut through that we're using this a little bit like a die if you're a paper cutter. And we are going to select over here on the right hand side this modify panel. Up here we have something called subtract all. I'm going to click on the subtract all and you will see these larger areas behind the frame disappear. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's copy and paste just one more time. You never know if you ever need that stage again. And the big reveal. Let's move the frame off and we have just the flowers left. And if you look very closely up here, you've got this tiny little bit. So be careful how you place the, the elements onto the area you want to create the pattern with. Um, I might have been able to adjust the layout of the flower slightly to lose that, but it's there. Let's see if we've caught everything. Oh, it doesn't help undo that. I should have grouped it together. Send it over to the left. Just zoom out a little bit. Copy and paste in front. Over to the move panel. So it's transform panel and then move six inches in the distance and to the right. Cop select all of this, copy and paste in front again. and six inches down. Have we caught everything? Let's have a look. There's a little bit there that's missing. Is it on the other side? No. Yes, it is. So I'm going to group that together and center it on the page and then you'll see when I was checking that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm moving a bit fast. If you didn't see up here, we've got zoom in and zoom out and this is uh, sort of a mega zoom. So once you click on that, you can go directly there and you can see this tiny little bit of a leaf on the right hand side that finishes off this leaf here and you can see that that it has it has been achieved in this area you may also see that we have all these little red lines cutting through which are showing you the six inch areas that we've created in silhouette studio um, you would see these lines and they wouldn't print but they would cut so if you are cutting them you should remove them. But what we're going to do just for visual aid is on the right hand side, select the line style, go to the color, down to the color and select this little area here. And that will remove any of the lines around the image and going through the image. And you can see that we have now created a repeat pattern.
think I've already grouped it. Yes, I have. So there we have it. That's the repeat pattern in Silhouette Studio. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you'd like to see more, please feel free to follow me by subscribing. Thank you very much. And I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye for now.